If you're the parent of a child who is learning how to read, make sure you stay until the end of this video because I'm gonna show you not just what makes a good flashcard, but how to use these to keep your child engaged in learning how to read and loving reading. Now, as an educator for the last 10 years and a parent for the last five, I know just how hard it can be to find quality educational materials to put in front of your child. A simple Google search for ABC flashcards will give you hundreds of options. And spoiler alert, most of them are bad. So I found through working with hundreds of kids, as well as working with my son and the families in my program, there are five big things to look for in quality flashcards that are gonna help your kid learn to read as quickly as possible. Full transparency before we start, I sell flashcards. So I'm gonna use mine as an example because we've built these five things in. But if you wanna buy a different set of flashcards that cost less money, or if you wanna make your own, that's A-OK, -okay. you can use these same five principles to help you get started. First thing you're looking for, are the flashcards sturdy? Are they toddler proof? We make a toddler proof box and toddler proof flashcards so that your kid can use these year after year, kid after kid. Most flashcard companies, this is where they save money and they make cards like this or like this. But when you're working with your kid, when you're making an investment in their learning, you want something that's actually going to hold up to your child as they age. Next, we want the flashcards to feature big letters. Don't underestimate how important this is. Many cards, they have these little letters that our kids can only read if we're sitting face to face this close to them. You want something that your kid can see anywhere they're practicing. It's gonna make your learning time that much simpler. Next, as we move down the list, I want you to think about what you notice about this card. Well, most cards, they have a letter and they have a picture right next to it. In this case, we wanna keep the picture separate from the letter. Now, why is that? It's because most kids memorize the picture if they see it every time they see the letter. If all your kid sees is ah, apple, ah, apple, ah, apple, do you really think your kid can recognize that ah without seeing the apple too? Maybe, maybe not. But when you're looking for a great flashcard, make sure that you see the letter alone. And if there's any picture at all, it should be separate so your kid is not identifying them both at the same time. Speaking of pictures, you wanna make sure that the picture matches the primary sound the letter makes. I'll give you an example. If the letter was D and the D says D, but I put a picture of a drum. When you pronounce that word drum, the first sound you say is j, j, drum, drum. It wouldn't make sense for me to have a letter saying d and a picture saying j. So we make sure the first letter matches the primary sound the letter makes. This is especially true for the vowels and for some special letters like X and xylophone. You see X saying z instead of X saying x. Always double check the pictures that are associated with the letters. And finally, I like to keep the uppercase and the lowercase next to each other. That's because kids can learn both at the same time. We've got 26 uppercase letters and 26 lowercase letters. If we taught them separately, that would be 52 different things to teach. Rather, we can group them, show them together at the same time, and our kid can learn twice as fast. Now, in the off case that your kid is only memorizing one case and not the other, you can always split them back out after and teach each individually. But most kids can get the hang of both at the same time, so I like to put them both together up front. And just as a bonus tip, I love cards that capture kids' attention. So you'll notice I've got all five of my sets out with me. Each of these sets is themed so that kids can pick which set they want. This doesn't really go into the reading part of it, but it goes into the interest part of it. I've taught toddlers, I've taught my toddler, I know how toddlers work. They want things that are colorful, that are bright, that are exciting, that they recognize. So when we put fun pictures, fun illustrations, themes, things our kids like, it makes them want to pick up those flashcards and try again. So if your kid is interested in cute animals, fruits and vegetables, trucks, we have a Spanish set, we have a fairy tale set, 
these themed sets can get your kid even more engaged in the learning. Now that we know what makes a great flashcard, let's talk about how to make this fun. And I'm gonna start with a couple toys that I found in my son's room. The first step in teaching letter sounds is to identify two or three sounds that you wanna practice with your child. We don't wanna practice all the letters in the alphabet at the same time because that can become confusing and overwhelming. So in this case, we'll practice the sound P and the sound eh. Once you've identified the two to three sounds that you're gonna practice with, your goal is to get your kids focus and attention on those sounds. Many people think that just means, okay, let's hold up the sounds and let's just keep going through them with our kid. But we can do this a lot more engaging than that if we play games while keeping their focus. Perfect example your kid likes Spider-Man or they like a stuffed animal. You can take the sound and after you explain it to your little one, have your little one practice teaching it to them. What sound does this make Spider-Man? Eh. Tricked them. They thought they were playing, they were learning how to read. Another example, for kids who love vehicles, find a vehicle, a car, a truck, a rocket, anything, and have them move that vehicle, fly that vehicle, drive that vehicle to the sound. Drive to the sound that says Drive to the sound that says eh. What sound did you just get to? That's right, eh. Again, they thought they were playing, they were learning with the flashcards. One more here because you can really turn anything into a game. You can take an object that they like and the object can hit the sound when they say it. You can throw the object at the card when they say the sound. The key is keep your kid focused, engaged, and paying attention to the letter sounds as you play the games. You want your kids saying this sound, those two or three sounds as many times as possible during your lesson. And the lesson here doesn't even be long, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. That's plenty of time. Just get them playing, get them hitting, get them engaged, get them saying those letter sounds as many times as possible. And if you focus on just a couple letter sounds and playing games like this with your flashcard, your kid is gonna be learning their sounds and learning how to read in no time. While there's a ton of different products on the table, I wanna reiterate that you don't need to buy anything to teach your child how to read. You can take index cards and a marker and write these letters, write them neat. Don't put a picture, show it to your little one and begin playing with the things you have around the house. If you wanna buy educational products, great, but you certainly don't need to you just need to know how to make this fun so that your little one actually wants to do it. And if you want more tips on how to teach your child to read the right way, how to avoid some of these mistakes like teaching every letter at the same time or moving on before they've got it down, I've got a free beginning reader workshop and the link is in the description. It's just 30 minutes long and just like this video, it is full of simple tips and tricks to help get your little one reading. We'll go through not just how to teach these letter sounds, y'all, but how to get them to start combining them and blending those sounds into words so you can hear them read for the first time. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Remember, I love to see you take that free training to take this up to another level. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon.